Hello folks, Jason Christman, JC's Bees, an Ohio beekeeper. In this week's video, I want to give an update on some of the products that I was building last week in my video. Before that though, just wanted to show bees are flying. Kind of got a warm morning. We've got lots of storms bouncing around though, so I don't see me playing in the bees today. But it's nice to see them out and about. What you're looking at here is a customer's nuke that will be picked up here another month, month and a half. Nice to see the bees. Nice to see the old girls. Let's head on into the shop and uh, I'll show you what I want to discuss. Okay folks, I want to start off with an update to last week's video. If you remember or fo have followed my videos for very long, you've seen that last week I shared how I am making these draw out boxes or cut comb boxes. And I had a few people say, well, why are you using a piece of uh, two inch styrofoam, two inches thick in the middle? Well, the reason for that is, is my frames, the length they are, um, I have to have something two inches thick in order to provide a, pr a frame rest on the inside. Um, if I just had a piece of three quarter board going down the middle, these frames would not reach. Um, I guess if you wanted to use a three quarter inch board in the middle as your divider, you would have to make your frames a little longer. And I did not do that because I am mimicking the box that was given to me um, with all of my dimensions. So, and they used a two inch piece of styrofoam in the center, and this is the size of their frames. Now, onto the piece of two inch styrofoam. And uh, I want to congratulate a lot of you that noticed the styrofoam and made the suggestion. Yes, bees will bore holes and eat styrofoam. It should be protected. You are very right. Um, what I have here is not styrofoam, but it is uh, some flexible insulating foam. And this was in a box I got from Saracel Beekeeping Supplies probably four or five years ago. Um, it was an aluminum hive body, uh, a deep aluminum hive body. And on the inside, this is what it had. And this is how it looked when I got it. And this is how it looked after the bees used it. This is propolis. Bees covered the whole thing. They did not like the styrofoam for some reason. Now, um, I don't have um, it to show you. But there was another piece, they actually chewed a great big hole right in the center and started removing it. So, back to this styrofoam, it is a great idea to protect it. And I want to uh, congratulate those of you who knew to do so. You were very right. And I took one of your suggestions, or maybe a couple of yous, and I covered my center divider with some aluminum tape. Now, the bees will not chew on it, bore on it. Or any of that. So yeah, I just got me some uh, 3M furnace tape or foil tape. Um, it's usually used to tape up uh, joints on ductwork for your heating and cooling. And I've covered that completely. Now it is completely safe. Um, the bees will not chew on it. They're liable to leave some burr comb or some propolis on it, but no big deal there. So that has been fixed. Now I'd like to discuss how the mini mating nukes have advanced since last week. If you remember, I shared these in the same video last week where I discussed the draw out box and I also discussed how I was building these. It has the same frames in it that I just showed you in the draw out box, but I was trying or taking suggestions last week on uh, ideas to make frame feeders to go back here. Um, it just so happens that I've got about two and a quarter inches here for a frame feeder. And I don't necessarily want to use all the two and a quarter for the frame feeder. I would like to be able to push these frames back, let's say a quarter inch to give me a slight space here. And that would leave me with about a two inch space here for my feeder. So I had several, several great suggestions. And uh, one fella, and I can't think of his name right offhand. I'm going to have to throw that up here on the screen once I get inside and see what his name is. Um, anyway, he uh, shared a link to B Source with a great idea for frame feeders. And that's the route I was going to go until I started to think about it. As many of these as I need to make, I need something I can uh, make very quick and not put a whole lot of time into it. So I took a different route. 
than uh, using the vSource link. But I'm going to share that in my video description if any of you would like to check that out as an option. So what I've done is I took a piece of, let me slide this back out of the way. We'll bring this back forward and discuss it more here in a minute. What I did was I took a piece of uh, two inch styrofoam again and I cut it down to fit back here where my frame feeder would go. I turned it to the top edge right here. Now this one isn't cut down to size, but let's pretend that it is. And in the center, I cut out a long slot about an inch wide. And the one I'm going to show you now is my prototype. It's not necessarily deep enough, but like I said, keep in mind this is a prototype. What I did, I took my utility knife, made a line down this side, a line down this side, a line here, and I just kept scribing at it until I got it as deep as I have. After I got it down so far, it actually worked out to where I could take my, uh, my chisel, my wood chisel, and just keep scraping back and forth, back and forth. Until I just got down as far as I needed. Now with this particular one, my prototype, I guess, as I said, um, I put ears on it. So it would act as a frame, you could just set it down on there. But after I found out that this does hold water and does not leak, um, I got to noticing a lot of fumes coming out of here. And I don't really want the bees drinking uh, syrup that's been set down in some fumy styrofoam. So, came back in here, cut me out a bigger one, like this. Now this one is the actual size that I need. The only difference is with this one, compared to my prototype, is there's no ears on this one. No frame rest, as you can see out here on this. So, I'm going to take this, and yes, I covered it with the aluminum foil tape too. And this one here is pretty darn deep. I'm going to guess, let me see if I got my tape measure here. Uh, we're about three and a quarter inches deep right now. A little handy tip for you if you do much carpentry work. Get you some grip tape like they use for skateboards. Put it on your tape measure. You've got an easy place to sharpen your pencil when you're out and about. <clears throat> Used to do a lot of decks and roofs. Anyway, from there, I made this. And this will screw down on. Uh, let me find my screws here. Oops. Via these long decking screws, which will go down through here and screw way down into the front, uh, styrofoam. That's why they're so long. There's not really much to screw into except for the styrofoam. So I want to make sure that I get a good bite on it with these long decking screws. On the inside, um, to keep the bees from drowning, I've taken a piece of screen and this is not fully molded yet. This is just a quick throw together so I could share with you this morning. And I'm going to take this and I'm going to fasten it a lot neater than that, of course. And there will be two of them. And then this, let me go ahead and pull this screen out. And we'll just go ahead and throw a couple screws in there and I'll show you what it looks like. Just give me one second here. And my other screw. right there so that'll go together like that and you can see I've countersunk the screw heads and voila a frame feeder very simple very very simple now one thing I didn't mention is underneath of this I did mention the fumes that I was concerned about I'm going to show you how I'm going to fix that the plan is to take a regular sandwich bag, tuck it down in here, fold it up over the edges, put my screens up in here, like I showed you here, but I'm gonna make them a little bit neater, and push that down in there. Now I'll pour the syrup in through these holes to fill this up, 
the bees will be able to go down and drink out of the baggie that isn't soaking in chemical filled styrofoam and everybody will be happy and as you've seen it sits very well in there got plenty of bee space for the bees to be up here when i put the lid on it's not squishing anybody so everything's good there the next update i did was i took a suggestion from somebody and i gave the front of my uh tubing let me pull it out a nice sharp angle so that way if the beetle lives uh, lands up here has to climb over there's a good chance it's just going to drop and fall out instead of dropping and falling landing in the tube so whoever gave me that suggestion big shout out to you appreciate that the next thing i've done to my mini mating nukes is uh you know i really like the wood look I always have Clear back to my carpentry days, uh, when we did carpentry, I also did wood refinishing. We redid a lot of antiques, and one thing we specialized in at the time was kitchen cabinet refinishing. We would go in, use a liquid stripper, and uh, strip the finish off of the cabinets, and apply a new Minwax finish. Um, that's right, I used to be a stripper. Not too many people know it. Kind of keep it hush if you would. I don't want the word to get around. But uh, being that I have a love for the uh, wood look, I wanted to kind of keep that going on my mini mating nukes. The problem is, is, well, with my experience, I know the sun and the rain, the snow, the weather elements just really play a toll on anything exposed to wood. Now, I've used, uh, let's see, Minwax makes a product uh, called Hellman's. It's supposed to be the ultimate outdoor polyurethane. And uh, I can tell you that the Hellman's does hold up better in the elements versus just regular Minwax polyurethane. But it is not foolproof. Still every year, maybe every two years, you're going to have to go out with some steel wool, rub that finish down, and put another coat on it. It's There's no way that it will not be... Uh, a constant job so I've also tried tongue oil the last few years I've been hot on the tongue oil I really like it you can just take a rag wipe on a few coats sanding or uh, steel wool between each coat and uh, you get a real nice soft uh, shiny box when you're done and that worked great for about two years and now the boxes look all old and gray so did it work No. so this year I'm trying something a little bit different I torched my boxes. Just took a regular Coleman torch. That's right, that's my sound effects. And uh, cooked the whole thing, even the bottom. From what I've read online, when you torch wood, um, it makes the grain a lot harder and makes it harder for the elements to penetrate. So, time will tell. Will it work? I, I tried to, you can see here these lines here on the front. I tried to make some kind of a pattern, but it didn't really work. I took an old uh, metal excluder, laid it over the front and tried to torch through the bars. And that's how I got this look here. I um, was kind of hoping to keep that going all the way around the whole box, but it didn't show up like I wanted. So I stopped doing that. Uh, let's see. I think that's about it on this. I did get my uh, screens stapled in the bottom. And for my screens, I used this uh, plastic uh, craft mesh, I guess. <coughs> now my plans are, is to not put feet on this nuke. And whenever I feel that it's getting hot, I can simply elevate the back with maybe a stone and that will provide ventilation. When it's not propped up, it'll be sitting on a solid bottom and there will not be any airflow coming up through the screen bottom. So that just seemed like a really simple way to uh, allow airflow or not to allow airflow. And I didn't have to put any kind of mechanism here to slide back and forth to close that off. So that's the update on the mini mating nuke. 
the frame feeder, and the draw out box divider. Now one thing I want to mention is uh, if you're going to experiment playing around with some of this styrofoam, um, I've found out that just my regular hand miter saw cuts this stuff very, very well. And uh, you get nice straight lines and it goes through it relatively quick and you get nice clean edges when you cut it with this saw. So just a little tip there to keep in your back pocket. And uh, always remember folks, just like it was reminded to me, bees will eat styrofoam. Um, they're not necessarily going to ingest it. They're just going to chew it and spit it outside of the hive. Or they could just bore holes in it and fill them full of propolis. It's really, really hard to say. But to save yourself some work in the long run, you should cover styrofoam with something. Okay, so before I close this video up, I want to head on inside and give you guys an update on my observation hive and the progress. If you remember, just a few weeks ago, I released a video called Defying the Odds. And in that video, I took uh, my observation hive, who had dwindled down to just a single worker and a queen, and was about to die, and I went outside, got a frame of uh, a super frame of bees, and brought it inside and put it inside the observation hive. At that point in time, I was curious to whether they would accept the queen. Well, they obviously have accepted her, but is she laying? No. I had several people ask me in that video, why didn't you give her an empty frame so she could start laying? And the answer for that is, there was a two frames, the top one and the bottom one, that had crystallized sugar in it. And uh, it didn't take much for the bees to eat that and make empty cells for the queen to lay. But did she act? No. She has yet to lay. Has any bees started to die? Very, very few. Um, one weird thing I have noticed is there seems to be two groups of bees. There's a larger group that's hanging with the queen, and then there's a smaller group that never joins the group with the queen. I don't really understand that. Maybe they're offended by her. I don't have a clue. But she has not started laying. She has plenty of places to lay, and uh, at this moment, I'm just letting time run its course. Uh, we get to some warmer weather then I'm liable to give her the hive tool test and, uh, you know, give them bees back to somebody else, to one of my colonies. But at this point, no eggs to be seen. So, this kind of answers my question. Why did the observation hive fall on its face? The queen was junk. That's why. So I hope you enjoyed that video, folks. I uh, hope it was informative, maybe gave you some ideas and maybe stirred up some creativity inside of you. We all know that this time we need to be creative. Uh, if we're not making something for our bees, then we at least need to be making something to do. Because at this time, uh, we're all in this pandemic together. So we got to keep our heads on straight, keep moving forward, and stay busy. If we don't, it's liable to eat at us. So keep busy, folks. If you enjoyed this video, throw me a big thumbs up. That'll help boost it in the YouTube search ranks and make it easier for other beekeepers to find. I'd also like to invite you to subscribe to my channel, and when you do, make sure you click that little bell so you can be notified when I release new videos. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week.